Geometry Dash, the game we've all seen at least once in our lives. Whether it was that one time when you were browsing the app store, seen someone play it on the bus on your way to school, or read this video's title and you're recommended, we've all made contact with this game before. When it initially got released, it was topping the charts. Not only was it one of the most popular platformer musical games, it was even as spread out as some of the most popular games of that time, that being Flappy Bird, Subway Surfers, or even Agario. It became renowned for many different aspects, some of which are it being the hardest mobile game ever, or one of the most rage-enticing games to exist. God! The said once mobile gaming giant made a huge impact on the mobile game industry and its users' perception of it. But now, nine years after its release, many ask themselves the same question. Where is Geometry Dash now? What exactly happened to it? What has changed through the years? Does the internet still talk about it? And to take a descent into its very core, is it even still alive? This is a video about the state of Geometry Dash in 2022 and its journey past the years, through initial integration, growth, apex point of popularity, and its obscure future. Let's begin by breaking down Geometry Dash's history. On August 13th of 2013, an indie game developer Robtop released his new gaming project which was at first called Geometry Jump that would later be renamed to Geometry Dash. Its beta trailer aired three and a half months before the release, while the actual trailer that has so far amassed over 100 million views on YouTube was uploaded two weeks before the game's official release on iOS and Android. Released were two versions of Geometry Dash, the light version with limited access to the game's features and the full purchasable version Version that holds the name of the game. At first, Geometry Dash was a mobile game, later on becoming playable on computer devices as well using the keyboard and mouse. It consisted of seven main levels that scaled in difficulty and were made by the developer himself, while the game's users could build their own levels using the level editor, which is still only available with the full version of the game. One month later, Geometry Dash received its first update, introducing a new level, new gameplay features, bug fixes, and general improvements. Another similar update followed two weeks after the first first one, extending the main level segment even more and adding a new game mode like the first update. A surge of updates followed up with the next one being released a month later, then another one a good month after that, and few very similar updates at a similar pace. Monthly gaps, new game modes, bug fixes, and a new main level or two. That was until the game's seventh update that was released on May 21st of 2014. That's when Geometry Dash started to receive a different kind of updates. From then on, they weren't as frequent as in the beginning, and they started including more than just a new main level and bug fixes. The updates started becoming more fruitful, and what's more, the release pace slowed down drastically. The 1.8 update was released three months after 1.7, including huge level editor changes, the ability to play the game with two players at once, and many more big notices. The update after that took another three months, introducing even more big changes such as importing custom songs from another website, many level editor changes, etc. That was the 1.9 update, and the last time players only had to wait a couple of months for a new version of the game. Geometry Dash's 10th major update, referred to as Geometry Dash 2.0, took 9 entire months to see the light of day. Since it took that long, it was subsequently filled with way more content that changed the game forever. After the 2.0 update, Geometry Dash became a social media. A system was introduced that allowed players to add friends, send each other friend requests and messages, follow their favorite creators, and check their local leaderboard placement. The game also received bits of a storyline that allowed unlocking rewards and player icons through its completion. To put it simple, the game was redefined and players were excited to see it thrive further. That is, until the next and the last of its updates, its 11th major update, or as it often gets referred to, the 2.1. The 2.1 update released no less than 509 days, or almost one year and five months after its predecessing 2.0 update. The trend of updates taking longer and containing more and more content at that point reached its peak. The update introduced more storyline, daily levels, new art, many player icons, new currencies, and I could keep going. It was such a massive update that it required another sub-update so that everything that was introduced could function properly. That sub-update, or 2.11, is the stage Geometry Dash is still at now. Ever since November 22nd of 2017 when the update was released, the game received no further development or updates from its creator Robtop whatsoever. It's been left in its late 2017 state and ever since developed with the help of its community. In the past times, community's involvement has started showing massive change in every aspect of the game, so why best pinpoint its role through the game's whole story? 
Needless to say, Geometry Dash's community has been through just as many changes as the game itself. The game is a rhythm-based platformer with lots of action and focus involved, meaning it's based on its users returning to it to finish what they make progress on. After reading reviews from 2015, which is as far back as I was able to browse them, its targeted audience upon release used to be children and young teens. Up until the 2.0 update in 2015, I've noticed no major changes within the audience segmentation as there was no reason for it. The updates were consistent, bringing however many many users stopped playing the game back within the span of a few months. The 2.0 update is the breaking point of when Geometry Dash community began changing. Not only did the new update bring a whole new perception to the game's difficulty with the introduction of moving objects that allowed for an entirely new gameplay experience, it allowed the community to begin connecting through the game itself with the help of the newly introduced friending and messaging system. When eventually the community realized that there will be no new updates for a while, they started partaking in the game development themselves. Things such as Geometry Dash clans, levels built by multiple people called collabs, YouTube content events, streaming events, and much more started becoming way more frequent than in the prior updates. In 2.0, Geometry Dash last saw its specs of former glory and the times when it was played all over the world by everyone. The reason for that is that the community features which were the main factor of players starting to connect more firmly were only available in the full version of the game. Its light version, which is where most of its players began, only received a new main level once every few years considering the slowness of updates. That's not much that would motivate new players into joining the community like at its release. Besides, when updates became less frequent, many of the old players left. What remained was the community's more determined side, players ready to climb the leaderboard in a race for the most stars collected, or those who strive to create and complete the new hardest levels. When eventually the 2.1 update was released, Geometry Dash had already lost so much hype that it brought back even fewer old players than the 2.0 managed to. Despite that, the community managed to develop and connect so tightly that, at that point, it had become a lot easier for somebody who newly started playing the game to actually integrate into it. Today, the community has so so much power that almost every community figure, including myself, own a Discord server where anyone interested in the game can make friends within minutes. The community is connected so firmly that there are things in the Geometry Dash community I haven't seen in any other communities as a result of the game being based on social connection. An example of that is Pointer Crates, a community developed website noting down the hardest levels and every high enough score achieved on them. On Pointer Crate, players compete for list points, which they can earn whenever they make progress on one of the top 100 and 50 hardest rated levels. Their scores are noted down, so are players with the highest total score. And what's interesting about Pointer Crate is that the game's developer had nothing to do with this project, and yet it has amassed a way bigger interest than the leaderboard system, which is an actual feature in the game. Community projects are surpassing whatever the game itself has to offer. There has even been an attempt at creating a private Geometry Dash server where players would program and develop the next update themselves. The community seems to be slipping away from the game's developer and taking his role, except it's really not. Even though there hasn't been another update in five years, Robtop, the game's developer, still retains his trusted developer role in the community and continues bringing hype for the new updates. And just how does he succeed at that? Robert Topala, or Robtop as he is known around the internet, is a Swedish indie game developer most notable for developing Geometry Dash and Boomlinks.com. Geometry Dash was at first his side project that he got into developing aside from his university studies, but seeing how much of a success it picked up, it soon became his main focus. According to him, Geometry Dash never really had a proper designed plan. It simply started as a template with a cube that could crash and jump. Through different iterations, I kept adding more and more features and content until the game felt right. To to follow up, Robtop's initial idea was not only to develop Geometry Dash, but to keep track of the demand for it on the platformer game's market and update it accordingly with the player's wishes. That explains the huge surge of updates at the start of the game's journey. His plan was to exist as a developing persona that chases his goals of growing a rhythm-based platformer game community and simultaneously keeping a coin for himself. But what he most likely didn't expect was that one day Geometry Dash would receive such a massive influx of players interested in the game. That's why, as a developer, Robtop had to adapt his marketing strategy to keep the player base interested. Since the game on its own has the ability to keep users playing long, everything he really had to do with the contemporary community is keeping them busy with updates. Every month one of them was released and everything seemed okay. 
That strategy showed success within downloads and reviews, but after about a year, things slightly changed, with the community grown to a point where at least 60 million users downloaded and paid for the full game, Robtop felt like he needed to revolutionize Geometry Dash. I'm not entirely sure if this is how he intended for the game to be, but as he started taking more and more time to release the updates, the community started to become self-sustaining. That means that the fanbase had so many interactions with itself through different projects like the early mentioned Pointer Crate or Geometry Dash Year awards that it started to lose less and less players and had a higher chance to keep an interest in users that just downloaded the game. Speaking of marketing, I wasn't able to find official Geometry Dash advertising clips appear anywhere except on Robtop's YouTube channel, meaning the game achieved such insane growth without being advertised at all. Well, Almost. Robtop was aware that if he kept the community waiting for the updates for too long, the game would eventually lose its relevance. That's why he started previewing the updates by releasing Geometry Dash spin-off games. There were a total of three. First was Geometry Dash Meltdown, released in 2015 just after the 2.0 update, then World, which reviewed the 2.1 update and was released in 2016, and lastly Sub-Zero, which released exactly one year after World in 2017 and actually previewed content that the game still doesn't have today. Trailers for all three spin-offs collectively received over 80 million views on Robtop's channel and, as a consequence, sparked a lot of hype within the community waiting for the game's updates. Today, four years after Sub-Zero came out, the community still talks about it knowing that there is physical evidence that one day the upcoming 2.2 update will be released. Another notable thing about Robtop's marketing strategy is that through time he became aware that relying on the community to run the game by itself until the next update is finished in a few years can be risky. So he started interacting with the community another way, not anymore as a disembodied developing persona, but as this. To understand the community, he became a part of it himself. Around 2019, he started interacting with the player base significantly more than in the times before. That includes commenting on players' levels, joining players' streams, talking in the official Geometry Dash Discord server, and even previewing the upcoming update on his Twitter account. All of this was until 2019 almost entirely unknown, and today it happens almost on a daily basis. We rarely not see the developer answering his fans' questions on Discord or updating the game's status on Twitter. So, what changed? It would make sense that, since he developed Geometry Dash only by himself, it became profitable enough for him that he really wouldn't need to develop it anymore, and if it was his choice, could scrap it for good. But as somebody who's spoken to him, I believe that he's just a nice guy that genuinely wants to have fun with his community. Something tells me that in the earlier days when the player base was still young and the game wasn't as diverse, there really wasn't much interaction for him to do, but now when players are able to do things such as transferring Sub-Zero's files onto the main Geometry Dash to gain early access to the 2.0, to update, he started opening himself up more. I assume he feels more welcome. Sure, he loves to tease the community with the 2.2's release, but his genuine positive attitude and feedback about the update more than make up for it. With the player base being able to sustain itself and the developer's activity amplifying the hype for the upcoming updates, I think the state of the game today is adequately stable. In recap, despite the lack of development, the Geometry Dash community today remains active and alive. There are many ways in which both the game itself and its player base changed since they first saw the light of day, but the changes we've seen bring a much better experience for the game to thrive further. The community is finding different ways to connect and remain visible on the internet, being bound together by one common wish, to finally be able to play the next update, which was recently previewed on Romtop's channel after two years since the last heads up. The update was even said to be released later this year, but in in reality, who really knows? One thing, however, is clear and undoubted. The hype for future updates will remain, no matter how long the game doesn't receive them for. Geometry Dash is after all still a big game, making its way into YouTube users' recommendation section and getting millions of views daily. Even if it's left untouched for another five years, well, the community might not grow as much, but it won't see a significant decay either. Until the next revolution. My name is Alias, and I would like to thank you for staying here until the end. This video has taken a very long time to make with all the scripting and research it took, so if you wish to see more similar content in the future, you can support me by subscribing to the channel and helping me reach the 100,000 milestone faster. I hope you liked what you watched, it was by far my most difficult video to make, but either way, I would like to say thanks for watching. See you later.